angry guy here. And Tyrone threw her onto the street after she refused to make love. And now she's homeless. Guys, if there's a video you want me to cover, a topic you want me to cover, to request a topic for a video, see the description below. And you can hit me up via angrymgtow at gmail.com with your topic. Guys, let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. I find this so intriguing. And shout out to Atlanta Interviews. Someone said that they wanted to see these Atlanta Street interviews for me to cover it. So now I am. Um, and so are you homeless? At the moment, yeah. Okay. And so how old are you? 34. 34? You're 34? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow, you look 20 something, man. I ain't mad at that. All right, so um 34. So how long have we been homeless? Um, well this is I've had on and off situations of being in this situation, but this is This latest one, how long has it been? A few months. A few months? What was it that happened a few months ago that caused you to become homeless? Um I was just staying with people and I, I two years of issue and um I was put on probation and I sobered up and tried to do the right thing, but I don't have many people that I can call on. So I went to stay with somebody and they changed and wanted to turn it to a favor. So, so this was a guy, I guess, and I guess he wasn't upfront about him wanting for favors and stuff. So he made it seem like he was just going to be all good and then it turned out to be different. Yeah. How long was it until he started acting or showing you that it was different? About three weeks. About three weeks. He played the role for about three weeks. Yeah. I get it. I get it. All right. Hold on one second. Yeah, yeah. I definitely get it. Did this addiction result from like you having a prescription at one point or anything like that? Or yeah. Um. And I was on medicine as a child. I've been through foster care and uh, not having a real place to call home or you know supportive family. So once I got off my medicine, I started self medicating to kind of cover what up year. Something. How old were you when you went into uh, foster the foster care system? Six. Six? Do you I know in, why? I was in foster care until then, and then I got adopted at six. Okay, you got adopted at six. Do you know why you had to be in the foster care system in the first place? Like, did they? Did you ever get the story as to why your I've, biological mom and dad couldn't? I've gotten mixed stories between that. Well, what's the gist of it? She couldn't kick it, but she said she didn't start it until after we got taken away. So she says she didn't start her, her addiction until after you guys got taken. Yeah. But the story that you heard on the other end was that she the was reason our... why you got taken was because she was on that stuff. Yeah. Which kind of, I guess, makes a little more sense, right? Yeah. I get that. I get that. Do you have any kids? No. No? I have three fur babies. Three fur babies? They're my service animal. Is that what's going on right here? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. And so have you ever been married? No. No? Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, so as far as it goes... Um, as far as the foster care system and everything goes, um, so you was in that up until six and you got adopted at six. What age did the, the R work and what age did those things happen? Earlier than six, basically? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, was it, was it someone that was living with you that did that or was it like somebody that, you know, outside the house type deal? They, they were in the foster homes that I stayed in. So they were in the foster the foster care home that you was in, basically. Okay. Um, was this like one of the foster kids that was also there type deal? I don't know. I don't know, I, I, I don't know who it was. Or if, it, if it was a, a teen or an adult, I wasn't told. I was just... Told that it happened? Yeah. Okay, okay. Later yeah. on, when I was like 20, I was told that. Wow. Wow. But I've been going through like depression type things since five, and I couldn't figure out why. And then I was told a bunch of stuff. That Who told you that that stuff had happened? My foster mother. My mom. Okay. And so, as far as the R word, when did that happen? What age were you? Thirteen. Thirteen? Um, what were the circumstances of that happening? Was it like outside or, you know, was it inside the home type deal? or? No, it wasn't in my home, but it was somebody I knew. Somebody that lived with you? No. No? no. Uh, was this person related to you, or were they just like a friend? They were just a friend. Okay. Or supposed to be. Supposed to be? Yeah. Um, was, was, were they like around the same age, or were they significantly older? Yeah, two years older than me. Two years older? So what was it that happened? How did that, like, occur? I mean, guys, while I empathize for the situation, 
always assume that everything that she says is a lie. Always assume that everything that she says is a lie. Okay? It's, it sounds harsh, but it's true. Notice what happened here. She went to a dude, because that's usually how it happens. Most of the time, their female friends are not going to take them in. Most of the time, a woman is not going to take some random woman in off the street, but a man will. What this woman wanted was she wanted to have a provider and a protector and give nothing in return. She's acting like she had no idea that this dude liked her or wanted a relationship. Completely oblivious, guys. This is, this is the mindset. This is the reason why men and women can't be friends. Okay? They can be, they can have a great relationships, but they cannot be friends. That's why men have to be very careful with the notion of female friendship. Because you don't, you're not getting out of the relationship what you would be getting with other friends. When I have friends and we go out, it's a give and take thing. I do something for them, they do something for me. I cover a drink from them for them. They cover a drink for me. I bring the pizza, you know. I bring the pizza. They bring the drinks, you know. Uh, guys, I use uh, what I, I'll give you another example. I uh, I cook. They clean up, right? Or they're going to the store. I want something at the store. They go to the store and grab something for me, and say, "Hey, could I grab something else? Something also for myself." This is how a normal friendship works. It is a give and take relationship, and we both feel good about that. We feel good about that, okay? Friend is crashing at my place. You know, when I come home, they're going to tidy up. They're going to tidy up for me because I've been at work. They're crashing at my place. They're not going to sit around all day doing nothing. They're going to be there. They're looking for a job. They're working on getting back on their feet. They're tidying up. I come home, the toilet's clean, bathroom's clean, everything is nice and fresh. You know, whatever they can offer, whatever they can do, whatever value they can build, right? Sometimes they do such a good job and I have a spare room like, dudes, man, you know, just, just listen, you keep doing what you're doing. And as long as you keep doing what you're doing, you can just stay here until you get back on your feet. Because this person is providing so much value to me. They're providing so much value to me. They're such a utility to me that, you know what? I want them to be around. That's how a normal friendship works because friendships are transactional. With women, on the other hand, a normal relationship is transactional between a man and a woman. Despite what people want to say, it is a transactional thing. All right? It is an, a normal relationship between a man and a woman is an exchange of value, just like a normal friendship between a man and men. And different friends serve different purposes. However, when you have friendships that are between women and men, they are all one sided. When you go out to eat, the guy often pays for the girl. I want you to think about that very carefully. When you go out to eat, the guy often pays for the girl. If he's with the girl, he's now responsible for protecting her. When she's lonely and he's spending time with her, he's playing the role of a boyfriend. He's providing her with utility. So he's providing her with money. He's providing her with protection. He's, comp he's providing her with companionship. And in return, she's not giving him anything back of value, but claiming that her presence is enough and she's there for him, for his emotional needs. So just by her being there and existing in his life, she's providing him with value. That's absolute crap. If I have a female friend, right? She should be cooking for me. She should be cleaning for me. She should be doing things to provide value. When it's my birthday, she oh, that should be a big celebration. I'm being very clear. I am being extremely clear about that. That's but but the crazy thing is that's not how these relationships work. Because if you're getting boyfriend treatment from me, then I need to get girlfriend treatment from you. 
And then these are the same women that will turn around and say that men, men are such jerks. They don't know how to be kind. Guys, I warned you. I warned you that after feminism collapsed, right? After feminism collapses, and it will collapse, women are, and women end up in a terrible, hazardous state where they are struggling for survival. They're going to say, men need to find their hearts. They're going to start quoting the Bible and saying that the hearts of men have become hardened. Completely oblivious to everything that they've done. Literally down to the fact that they are now saying that men should no longer speak to women that they do not know. They should not approach women that they do not know. They should not speak to women that they do not know. Of course, Chad and Tyrone can break these rules because they don't care. But the typical guy should at all costs never speak to a woman that you don't know. Do not approach a woman do, that you do not know. Guys, this is where, and I told you, I've, I've said this already, that the M2 movement, part two, it's going to be online. It's going to come back with a, with a vengeance as women are, are, are looking for their next meal. As everything is going downhill. And guys, it's going to be online. They're going to go for guys, of course, in the real world. But it's a lot. But it's going to be heavily online where they're going to be going after guys who simply message them, sent them messages, guys that they don't even know or guys that they have that they met and they exchanged. Their, they gave their phone number to the guy texted them and they didn't like the text messages. And they're going to put those. They're going to put text messages online. They're going to put DMs online from some guy that lives in, uh, lives in Australia and they live in New York. And they, this guy has never been to the United States. And they're going to air all of these guys out and try to, and try to gain monet monetary compensation, be it from them or from the companies that they work from or from the state. This is going to be the, uh, this is going to be the reality of things. And it's only going to drive an even larger wedge between men and women. There's no, there's nothing left, to be honest. The only people out there are simps right now. The only guys going out there and dating in Western society right now are simps. If you are dating in Western society right now, you are a simp. 100% simp. And I want to know, like, let me know if you agree in the comments that the only people, only men dating in Western society right now are simps. No man in their right mind would be dating in Western society right now. If you are giving a woman the boyfriend treatment, she needs to give you the girlfriend treatment. It has to balance itself out. It has to. Modern women, they are completely unrealistic and all they want to do is take, 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 take. And... I think she said earlier that like this is not the first time she's been in the streets. She's 34 years old and she basically said something like she came here when she was 21, right? But according to what I've seen here, this woman is about 34 years old, right? That's actually in the title of the video, right? It actually says 34, he evicted me and dropped me off at the Greyhound station after I refused love making. Now I'm homeless. She so She's 34 years old. She came out there when she was 21. Guys, now you can see the story doesn't add up. What? So it's been 13 years and you've been in and out of homelessness for 13 years because she's acting like he's the first, like this just happened yesterday. Th th guys, there's a lot that happened during those 13 years. All right. She's acting like this just happened yesterday. Bro, your story makes no sense. You're like, I came out here and then this happened. No, 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 no. You said you were 21 when you came out there. And you're 34 now. There's a big gap right there. What happened in between that time? What happened? Guys, do you see why I say now? You should always assume that everything a woman says is a lie and then look for the truth in her lies rather than assuming that everything she says is the truth and trying to look for the, the, the truth <laughs> and trying to look for the lies in the truth. This is ridiculous. It's sad. I. This is the reason why men, if only... Only a man out of his mind would be dating in Western society and having relationships in Western society. I want to know your thoughts in the comments, guys. Tyrone threw her onto the streets because she refused to make love, and now she's homeless. I want to hear what you think in the comments, guys. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA, men walking away. And cheers.